talking right now with Andy Hahn. He's the chief technology officer for microgrid activities at a company called Schneider Electric. And Andy, thanks for taking the time to talk with me today. Yeah, thanks, John. Happy to be here. Yeah. So microgrid, start with a very simple question. What the heck is a microgrid? You, you know, I get that question all the time. And in fact, the microgrid problem is that the microgrids cover a wide spectrum of applications and needs for a lot of different part partners and, and players. So from the purposes of our conversation, I think, John, the best place to start is what I call a prosumer microgrid. Prosumer being a producer and consumer of electricity and proactive user of their electricity. And the idea of the prosumer microgrid is it's a microgrid that sits on a customer's site. It sits behind the meter primarily. And the microgrid actually works for purposes of bringing on-site localized production of energy, such as solar photovoltaic, maybe a small micro wind turbine, a natural gas power plant or combined heat and power plant, mixes those energy assets together, combines that with the utility connected energy and makes wise choices from the utility of when to buy energy from the utility, when to locally produce energy, perhaps with some storage, when to store that electricity that they're either producing or buying, and then to wisely use that energy on their loads or their applications to reduce their costs, to increase their sustainability footprint, and most importantly, in many cases, the ability to island from the grid in case of an outage and use those energy assets to complete, completely serve either all or a portion of their critical loads in their site. Well, Andy, as you know, uh, at AutoLine, we're all things automotive. And when you start talking electricity, naturally our thoughts go to electric cars. How might electric or microgrids play a role in charging electric vehicles? Yeah. So electric vehicles, you know, have, have a unique uh, and interesting value proposition in that you have the ability to bring your own power solution to the product. Traditional internal combustion engines, you know, we go fill the vehicles up with the fuel, either diesel or with, with gasoline. And you either can have a stored tank on site or you go to a filling station or some other depot to fill your fill your vehicles. In the case of electric vehicles, we can electrically charge those vehicles on our on our premise, on our site, either at a commercial building or even in a residential in case it's a, a residential application. And in this sense, the electricity has to be provided to that vehicle through the electrical system. Many electrical systems aren't designed to carry large power requirements of electric vehicle charging. Electric vehicle charging, it can be one of the largest loads that would show up on an electrical system. So in the case of a microgrid, you're able to supplement the service entrance, either the substation or the electrical entrance to the facility or to the site and add in energy assets that are locally generating enough energy to support the load that maybe the utilities substation or feeder system is unable to support or your electrical system, in fact, through the electrical distribution system, the electrical system is unable to handle all the extra energy, even if the ener even if the electricity was able to be provided by your utility service. So in the case of a microgrid, we can put that energy asset in behind the service entrance. We can begin to use that energy assets to actually charge the battery uh, of the electric vehicle. But also if you have electric energy storage capability on site, you're able to charge your own localized battery and then shift over time the energy consumption needs of your users so that you're not putting peak demand charges on the electric grid or on your on your or on your on bill uh, energy needs so you're, you can reduce the cost of your site's energy consumption while you're using the electricity to charge your vehicles so really you could integrate electric vehicles with a microgrid the electric vehicle itself puts a large demand on the electrical infrastructure and the microgrid, in fact, works in conjunction with the electric vehicles to make the right choices about when to charge the vehicles and or when to buy energy from the grid or, low, or use locally produced energy. We know that solar energy is only provides energy at best during the day. And so at nighttime, you may have stored solar energy during the day and into a battery. 
and then taking that battery stored energy and use that stored energy to charge the electric vehicles that are connected to your grid system, to your infrastructure during the night hours or during other peak charge hours where you want to reduce that cost. So there is a direct interaction of the microgrid control system on how to do best management of the electric vehicle infrastructure charging. Yeah, uh, electric vehicle proponents have always said that uh, the national grid can easily accommodate millions of electric cars. But the question's always been, okay, that's on a national basis, but when you get down to maybe, let's say, some upscale residential areas where everybody goes out and buys electric cars, or with fleets, which have a whole fleet of electrics to plug in, that could be an issue. Is this a key area maybe where microgrids could step up to the rescue? Absolutely. Perfect question, John. The fact is the the grid's capacity to source the energy because because we've been in a bit of a declining demand on our electric our electrical grid system the capacity of the grid is there to be able to bring enough power to the sites the issue is the distribution system either at the end distribution such as in a neighborhood a subdivision etc or in a facility where you may have a substation that's unable to source enough power the microgrid does replace that problem by being able to introduce local controls, either stored energy and or local gen locally generated energy to be able to resolve the problem of the end distribution or what we call the edge of the grid problem of trying to get to the charge charging network. Tell us a little bit about your company. What, what exactly is the role that Schneider Electric plays in this? So Schneider Electric is a world leader in electrical distribution automation control systems. And so we electrify uh, many, many buildings, uh, infrastructure for, for substations all the way down to the electrical outlets in many uh, applications. So our function, Schneider worldwide, is to be able to bring enough energy to whatever application a client needs to ensure that that energy has uh, all of the right characteristics. So some companies may be on a move to have more sustainable or interesting, uh, interesting uh, green energy initiatives. And so we are responsible for bringing the controls who actually distribute the energy through the building, but not only distribute them, but do so in a way that achieves the uh, idealized uh, metrics, either for cost or sustainability that the, that the uh, customer wants to uh, achieve in their overall economic environment. And who's using these microgrids and where in the world are they especially popular? Oh, I love that question. So 20 years ago, microgrids were kind of limited in their application and they were largely considered uh, backup electrical systems used in the case of an, an emergency power system used in hospitals and in data centers, primarily because the criticality of the loss of the energy was so important to the uh, end user that they would have a uh, large cost put in place to bring energy in case of an outage from the grid. Today, we're using industrial IoT or advanced uh, control systems in microgrids to not only do backup energy support, but in real time, bring localized baseload energy also on site and be able to manage all of that energy coincidentally with the grid acquired energy. So when the grid's cost of energy is low, you might want to buy your energy from the grid and store it in a battery. Or if the energy on the grid or the price of the energy from your utility is high during peak demand hours, you can then use your local generation to turn on generators or turn on the battery to discharge that battery and induce your cost. So we have these control systems today through industrial internet of things that allow us to do this and do this very simply and very effectively and to remain valid over the changes that happen in the electrical system, either in the tariff structure or the needs of the, of the end client. So who should do this is Every commercial building, every hospital, every data center, every factory, all have needs around energy that's supplementing their, their charges and their demand costs on the electrical utility can be impacted financially and beneficially for sustainability metrics through the use of a microgrid. And the costs to do this with the, with the uh, control systems that are available to us today make that easy to do, simple to do, and inexpensive to do. Uh, I want to ask you about cost. I got to imagine there's big ones, there's small ones, there's medium-sized ones and all, but what's a microgrid cost? So that's 
That's that's uh, the question. You, you kind, John, you kind of hit hit the biggest point. They are going to be all over the spectrum, and uh, fundamentally, I think the key for us to understand is that when we talk about a microgrid, if we're talking about a very small microgrid, such as in a small commercial building or even a large residence or in a residence, the cost of the controls, the cost of the storage devices. These things are often very expensive relative to the savings or the objectives that you might be meeting. So it's really, really very selective, those who would decide to do that. But when you get into the costs associated with a, let's say, a small, uh, a small hospital or a small or a large office complex, these costs can be you know, several million dollars for the electrical infrastructure, but they can pay themselves back or they can bring a value stream to an investor that will be easily, acquired, easily able to be deployed and be able to be amortized over the, life of the, over the life of the electrical installation that's there. So if you think of a 20 year life cycle and you put in a, a, a one megawatt or a two megawatt power system to support a small facility, then you might in fact be spending several million dollars, but the cost savings and the benefits will, will return benefits to the investor who's doing that. Real good. Those are my questions. Am I missing anything? Anything that you'd like to add about this? No, but if we think about the electrical vehicle uh, question specifically, John, on where can where can we really make and and who who can really make uh, value out of microgrids? Well, it turns out that especially the points you raised about the fleet vehicle manu fleet vehicle owners, but also fleet vehicle manufacturers who want to be able to sell fleet vehicles to end users who are currently using internal combustion engine uh, vehicles. These microgrids can be packaged and sized such that when you want to sell a set of vehicles to a to an end user you can bring the electrical infrastructure along with the charging apparatus to be able to bring the capability to the site so you're not just dumping a bunch of vehicles on site and telling the end user to figure out how to get them charged the electrical system can actually deliver all of that and the end and the provider of the system can can work with a Schneider or other packaged uh, uh, solution providers to bring this electric vehicle infrastructure and make it easy for a fleet operator or a large user of electric vehicles to be able to make that transition from ICE to electric vehicles much pain, much more painful, much less painful. Well, Andy, I got to tell you, I, I'm not going to say that I'm an expert now in microgrids, but I know 100% more than I did before this interview started. Oh, great. I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm glad. And by the way, there are many papers, there are many documents out there for people to read and to, to be able to look and peruse on this space. And I would say from the electric vehicle standpoint, um, while, the, while the vehicles are the sexy and interesting uh, thing for people to consider when they look at the value proposition associated with electric vehicle transition, honestly, the electrical infrastructure transition is what excites me the most of all of this because it really is taking the best of our current, um, I would call it our grid system and adding in all of the benefits associated with provision of renewable generation assets and putting in a much more green infrastructure to drive these greener vehicles that are to provide power to these greener vehicles that we are driving in the future. Excellent, Andy Hahn from Schneider Electric. Thank you so much for your time today. Great, thank you, John, I appreciate it. Thank you very much.